if you remember, when we're dealing with slope, our negative sign, right, can go on the top or the bottom, right? You guys remember a linear equation and you had a negative number? No? People remember? Negative 4 over 2 is equal to 4 over negative 2, right? It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter where my negative sign is going to go. So what I'm going to do is for this problem, I am just going to distribute that negative sign throughout. Yeah, there's a negative in front. Okay, So there's a negative sign in front. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute it through the top. You could do it through the bottom. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to uh, um, change, change the problem at all. So I'm just going to distribute it up top so then I can go through the problem. So remember, the first thing we always want to do is let's determine the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote, remember, is going to be the values of your variable that make your denominator 0. So to find that, I just take t plus 5 and set it equal to 0. Okay, So the vertical asymptote is going to be when t equals negative 5. All right. The next thing, remember, is to do the horizontal asymptote test. And we obviously know, because the problem is asking us to do slant asymptotes, we're not going to have to do this. But remember, for the horizontal, we just want to take a look and do the test. Look at your degrees and determine, are they equal to each other, or is one degree greater than the other? Remember, if this is your degree in your numerator is less than a degree in your denominator, you have y equals 0 as your horizontal asymptote. If your degrees are the same, you have y equals the coefficients of your leading terms, which would be a over b. And if it's larger, then you do not have any horizontal asymptote. And we look up here, our degree up here is 2, and our degree for our denominator is 1. So therefore, we have n is greater than m. So our horizontal, we do not have a horizontal. So I'm just going to write none. Now, when, it, when we have no horizontal, we have a slant. So to find the slant, which now looks like a t, remember we have to use long division. So I'm going to write t plus 5 divides into negative t squared plus 0t minus 1. I'm going to put the 0t in there so just so I have everything, my little placeholder, so I don't get it confused. All right? So now let's go and substitute in. t goes into negative t squared, negative t times. Negative t times t is going to negative t squared. Negative t times 5 is a negative 5t. So we put in parentheses, subtract. Now we can put a 0 there. All right, just put a 0 for a placeholder. Negative t minus negative t obviously is going to give us a 0. 0t zero minus a negative t is going to give us a positive 5t. And negative 1 minus 0 is still just going to give us negative 1. Then does t go into 5t? Yes, it does. 5 times. And then 5 times t is going to give you 5t. 5 times 5 is 25. Subtract. Uh, that gives you, obviously, 0. And negative 1 minus uh, 25 is going to be a negative 5t right here, 5t minus 1. And then you just subtract. So you do 5 times 5 times t, which is 5t, 5 times 5, which is 25. All right. Then 5t minus 5t is 0. If you owe a dollar and you borrow 25 more dollars, now you're going to owe 26. So then our remainder, which doesn't really matter, is going to be negative 26 over t plus 5. And remember, as this gets larger and larger, as my t values get larger and larger, it goes to 0, right? So we just kind of cancel it out. We're not going to worry about it. So our slant asymptote is going to be the equation y equals negative t plus 5. And this function is not the correct name. Is it f of x or is it it's f of t, right? There we go. So as remember, t is your input value, right? So is everybody cool so far? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to erase this. Is that all right? So, so, well, because like I was checking more answers because I didn't get that. But I didn't get back. It said, it 
All right, so let's go and do the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, because that's something we all need to make sure we do. And then what we'll do is uh, um, we'll talk about our domain, and then we'll talk about our solution points. So yes, so we need to do x and y intercepts, right? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it all in general. Okay. So let's talk about the x-intercept. Remember, the x-intercept is when your f of 0 or f of t equals 0. So that mean, just means your output. Whatever your output is equals 0. So you just say 0 equals negative t squared minus 1 over t plus 5. Remember, to get this off the bottom, you multiply it. Okay. 0 equals negative t squared minus 1. Add 1, add 1. 1 equals negative t squared. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. t squared equals negative 1. Square root, square root. Can you take the square root of a negative number? No, remember that's going to be talking about our i, so we're actually going to have an imaginary root. So therefore, in the real number system, it does not exist, your x-intercepts. Okay, so and for this problem, since we have to take the square root of a negative number, Griffin, we're not going to have an x-intercept. So as far as our x-intercepts go, we don't have any x-intercepts either. Real x-intercepts. Because you have to take the square root of a negative number. No. Oh. Yes, now we do the y-intercept. Very good. So let's do the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is when your input value is going to equal 0. So it's not x this time, it's t. So all we do is we put 0 in for t. So I have f of t equals negative t squared minus 1 all over t plus 5. That goes to 0, that goes to 0. We're left with a negative 1 fifth. Yes. Um, for like, when you put the table, yep. um, let's say like you're, like you have an x point that gives like in the y zero, can you automatically say that that's like the x intercept? Yes. When the x is zero, when, the, when you plug in, when you have a point with the x is zero, and when you find your value for y, that's automatically the y intercept. Okay, yes. Because like that's 45, that's what happens, so I just kind of like that. Yep. Um, yes, whenever you find x equals 0, that's always going to provide your y-intercept, or t equals 0 in this case. So therefore, we have x-intercepts none, y-intercept is that negative 1 fifth. We cool? Yep. <sighs> All right. Um, we're getting almost there. This video is getting way too long. But um, the last thing, ladies and gentlemen, is let's just kind of get an idea of what this graph would look like. All right? I don't have a graphing calculator. I'm not going to try to graph this. But I just want to show you, just so you have an idea, First of all, do we have a vertical asymptote? Yeah, our vertical asymptote is at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that means, remember, when we're talking about domain, we talked about domain of a rational function is all the real, all real numbers except the values that make your denominator 0. Well, the only value that makes our denominator 0 is negative 5. So our domain is going to be all real numbers except x, or except when t equals negative 5. So there's a couple ways you guys can write this. One way to write that, what, that statement that I just said, is negative infinity goes all the way to negative 5 union negative 5 comma to all the way to infinity. Wait, so it's just the whatever. So whatever you're exempting. Wait. Which was negative 5. Whatever the vertical axis, axis Your vertical asymptote. Asymptote, that's what I meant. Yes. Your asymptote is not going to be a part of your domain. Besides that, it's going to so be all real numbers. Like this, what the it's just the denominator, right? Right. You could say all real numbers except um, t cannot equal negative 5. OK, you could also just. Um, it's just it's going to depend on what uh, what we're going to be asking for. This is going to be your you know your no, uh, your set notation that you might be seeing on a on a test. So it's important for you guys to know both forms. All right, and we'll talk about what I'll accept. Like, tomorrow on the quiz, if you ask for the domain, 
um, I'll accept it in both values for you. All right, so the only, does everybody see how this affects our domain right there? Good, yes? All I'm asking you guys to do for your solution points is, yeah, to pick points that are going to be to the left and to the right just of your vertical asymptote. Yes? What if the vertical is zero? Does it matter? You bring it negative. Then zero is common. Are you going to ask for like four? Like Do this, it all depends on each problem's different. Some of them you might have two asymptotes. So you're going to be two to the left, two between them, and two to the right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Ye